thank you for taking this call uh, for to discuss uh, Shadow Walk um, for the Geeks of Doom. Um, Shadow Walk, uh, uh, legendary main man Thomas Tull came up with the with the concept and outline. Uh, correct. Um, and so, how did you become involved? In- uh, Bob Schreck, who was the editor on it, had reached out to me at San Diego a year and a half ago because mm-hmm. uh, he and I had been looking to do something together, and he pitched me the the basic elevator pitch. And I was very interested. And that led to a meeting with Thomas where I, I did have my shields up. I admit that I had my shields up because I was ready for it to be yet another meeting where some, you know, some big shot studio head tells me how to write comics and any, what he's really trying to do is get a movie made. Uh-huh. And that, so my shields were up. And honestly, like within five minutes, it was clear to me that Thomas didn't really care about what medium we were telling him. He just wanted to be told in medium that made sense. And, you know, you want, if he was going to be a graphic novel, make it a really good graphic novel. Right. Don't sell it. You know, don't, don't try to disguise it. You know, don't just try to disguise a TV pitch as, as a comic book. Uh, and that was what it sold me was that he, he said, look, let the story have its own integrity. Mm-hmm. To what extent does morality, hope, uh, optimism inform your writing? Is it, is it, uh, every, in, in, yeah. Every, that's a good question. And it, the answer is in every aspect. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that, that, and I cannot defend this belief as articulately as I would like. <laughs> and I think, you know, as I'm, I'm reticent to say it, but I'll still say it. I honestly believe that, that you have a, you have certain ethical and moral responsibilities in the, as an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not necessarily, reflect a moral and ethical stance of the 1950s or of a, you know, of a particular mindset or a particular worldview, but just you have an ethical and moral responsibility to to do something with your art and to tell a story that has a voice and has a point of view. And luckily for me, I don't have a very cynical point of view. In fact, I'm not really, I, I, I loathe and abhor cynicism because mm-hmm. uh, I think it's so easy to write. Anybody can write a cynical story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the challenge in writing something like Shadow Walk where there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of hope or virtue in the basic setup because uh, it's, you know, it's, it's science fiction slash horror uh, is how do you find that element of uh, of hope? How do you find that, that ray of optimism in what is a truly horrific dark story. Right. And you know, the, the answer really became about ex- using the story as a platform to examine the concept of faith. To yes. examine the concept of, you know, you put, put a group of people together who are marching through the valley investigating, and they all have faith in different things. They all, some of them are theologians, some of them are, are you know, mathematicians, some of them are hard science guys, some of them had no obvious faith in anything at all, right. uh, and you let those people sort of bump up against each other, and then the drama that results out of that, the contrast, gives you a real motor for a story. That's interesting. You you meant, touched on what was going to be one of my questions. A, 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 scient, a, a, a scientist's faith in, in his or her, or her science can be as strong as a priest's faith in a higher being or a god. Um, Will we see, and I guess we're going to see this dynamic played out, as you've just touched upon, with different sort of personalities. Um, the, the one thing I, I wonder if, you know, in searching for truth and an ultimately spiritual truth, um, the one thing potentially is that you may not want to find out the answer. Um, that's the, true, the, actually. Pardon me? No, that's true. Yeah. There, there, are, there are times when you don't want to find it, exactly. That, yeah. And that is, frankly, you know, that is one of the, the big running threads of the book is that one of the one of the main characters and the point of view character of the story is uh, an elderly priest, mm-hmm. and he's sort of hit a point in his life where he's not entirely sure what what the reward for his faith is going to be, mm-hmm. and, and and it is constantly and severely questioned throughout the entire story. Right. Um, I, 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 are, you know, I'm, Kingdom Come, of course, is legendary um, and for its themes and its just impact and, and sort of uh, undercurrent uh, in the, the, the 
tonality of it. Now we have shadow, shadow walk. Are biblical themes something that are important or attractive, uh, if not important, but uh, compelling for you? Um, and if so, why? I mean, it, it can be. I mean, I, yeah. I, you know, it, it's easy to forget that Kingdom Come was, what, 16 years ago, 17 yeah. years ago. So, uh, so from my, it, to me, it doesn't seem like a well I'm going back to as, as often as it might seem to other people. But that said, I was born in the Deep South, and we did you know, our big Thursday revival, tent meetings, and, you know, snake handling, mm-hmm. and think um so you've mentioned science and 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 you know religion does one need faith in order to survive or or maybe to be more precise does one need to have a belief in something bigger what does the faithless person do the the atheist uh, it i guess the question is faith in oneself the will to prevail simply to live is that enough is and was that a theme in the book Shadow uh, walk is is the valley of the shadow of death given an exact location, and will if so, will this conflict with interpretations of of the valley where young David walked? Uh, um, no, in fact, thanks to Max Brooks and his incredible uh, research and reservoir of knowledge, uh, it ties in directly to uh, to where the valley of the shadow of death is. Theological definitions most likely low. Oh, okay. What, what Max did that was amazing was he really did his homework. He he dug into ancient mythology. He dug into you know prehistory. He dug into uh, legends and mythology from all over the world and all cultures, and so knitted this together as a as a backstory for the for the valley and its existence. Right. That gave me a lot of material to draw from. Right, because the the Valley of Shadow of Death, I believe, is is referenced by you know at least uh, uh, two religions, major religions, and he's managed to um, combine those inter- those interpretations. You're saying, which is I think fascinating. Um, is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Right, and and also my girl and my girlfriend is a, is a is a is a, is a doctorate in. Uh, Oh. So, you know, she was also a, a great help in knitting together, you know, cultural beliefs over the years and, and, and cultural histories. I'd, I'd read that, uh, correct, I, I read that the, that it's perhaps, a, without spoiling too much, uh, perhaps Iraq or por- some area of Iraq where this is situated. Yeah, it, it uh, actually is set, it is set in uh, what had Right. That was probably um, part of the ancient kingdom yeah. of, of Israel many thousands of years ago. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the wealth 
yeah, the wellspring of human civilization. Yeah. So that that's rather interesting, given our recent uh, you know political um, troubles in that country in that area. Um, that right, and we've made and we've made and we've made a story out of that. I yeah. mean, we've, you know, the fact that that is the fact that that is now this incredible hotbed of of military unrest and has been for some time yeah. becomes a story a story point we were able to actually walk up to and address. I have to ask, is Shadow Walk intended to perhaps uh, have a sequel to live beyond this graphic novel, maybe even beyond that in other media, you know, given legendaries, uh, you know, the the fact that they are, you know, a film company as well? Is there any sort of cross? It could be. I mean, it's certainly a question that's been floated, but, the, you know, the overall attitude was, first off, just make it a really good graphic novel and worry about other media later. And then secondly, you know, if people, if it's well received, if people like the story, if people dig what we're saying, then, you know, let's, then maybe there is a possibility for it to live on in, in other graphic novels or other media. We'll see. Um, how did, you know, comparing, you know, the other companies you've worked with, um, how did you find uh, working with the legendary crew and their approach, their, their flexibility and, and, and collaborative uh, um, quality? How was that? Thank you so much, Mark, for your time. Thanks for your time and thanks for your interest. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if there's anything else I can do, you let me know. Thank you so much, Mark.